everything in life will eventually break, fall apart, and fail you. And you gotta get up and ask yourself the question, is it worth it? Are you worth it? Only you can answer that question. And these projects definitely make you question it. Make you question yourself. It's a hard question to ask. And only you can answer it. And only you can pick up the pieces and fix what was broken. All right, so now I got eight. I did the other one over there last night. And I didn't want to record at night and not get any footage. Um, so I'm going to get eight here. And then we're going to try and put it together. Okay. Measuring it out, I just kind of bring it to my elbow like that. And put clothes pins all over the place, so if I miss one, I lose it in the grass. I got others. should do is just take a tape measure and go from one end to the other make sure that I have exactly 54 feet all right so it looks like we're roughly in the right spot um, so 54 feet right there so we're doing good just need to keep trucking along Last one.
So this was my previous method of setting up the wall. I would stretch it out and then I would just bit by bit tip it outwards. And I just, I no longer think that. Uh, the last three times I set up my yurt, I have set it up completely differently. And later on in this episode, you'll see how I do it. And it's better shown than explained. The problem I have with this method is I might not have 54 feet to stretch out. I might come into a spot and say, okay, you have 20 feet to set up your tent. And that lay down method doesn't work in that kind of setting. Also with this setting is I'm constantly jockeying it in and out of position, trying to get a, an accurate 18 foot circle. And that's just difficult to make sure that the walls are six foot tall. And, you know, I have to measure to make sure just like that. So this is the current method of how I set up my yurt. This is the center ring or the center point of the yurt. And you'll see exactly why I do it this way. So what I'm doing now is measuring out exactly 17 and a half or 18 feet. I can't remember which one, but I want to make sure that I have the right diameter and I get as close to a perfect circle as possible. Although, a ground cloth would have made this much faster and much easier. I can always just fold up the ground cloth and just stow it away. I only use it as a uh, footprint. Also, this hand truck was pretty handy for getting the wall out of the van and to the location where I wanted to set it up. Also, these little ratchet straps are ideal for keeping it all together nice and tight keep it from flopping around and it just is much easier to pack away so what I'm doing here is just slowly unraveling it but making sure that it's close to a circle as possible and eventually you can just spread it out real easy much faster without it flopping over on you and possibly breaking again So this is how I used to put it together. The problem with this is the only thing that's keeping the door and the wall together is that tensioning band, that uh, top rope there. And it's kind of a hassle to get that rope on there and complete the project. It just takes more time, as you can see. And I have to go all the way back around and kind of push it up, kind of hook it over some of the little peaks there and make sure it's near the top so I can actually get the rafters on and it has some sort of tension to push up against. Make sure it's nice and tight near the end. And there you go. But that's the old way of doing things. And I'm going to show you how I came, apart, came along with a new method to securing the door to the wall.
another reason why the wall fell is because it wasn't tied in to the wall. Like this door wasn't tied into the wall. So I uh, had to, to attach this little board. This is like on the inside. There's no board on it from the stuff that you guys have seen. Um, but this little board here, I attached with pocket hole screws. I can't seem to find the footage. So let me bring that in closer. See, the little pocket hole screws, it screws into there. So that way you don't see any screws from the inside of the, the yurt. And that is on there pretty good. And I'll bring this back. And so these tie into the wall and that keeps it nice and tight, completing that circle. Uh, before it wasn't, it was just the only thing that was keeping it on there was that that uh, tensioning rope at the very top. And uh, that's not enough, you need more. The other thing, a reason why I have this on there is because it kind of creates a C channel like that and the wall comes in and it can't go anywhere because that C channel kind of keeps it contained and that rope keeps tension to keep that wall from slipping out. and you know, going wherever it wants to go, and I don't want that. Because I don't want that tent coming down on my head in the middle of the night. So, yeah, I couldn't find the footage. This is the best I can do. But, uh, yeah, I used a lot of pocket hole screws to get that thing attached to the door. Adds a little bit of weight, but not much. So, I'll have to send you off with a be humble, be helpful, and be honorable.